Welcome to another tutorial on Autodesk PLM 360. Uh, in this tutorial we're going to cover users, groups, and roles. So the first thing we'll do is log in. So one way or another you have a login to your site. It might be administrator, sysadmin. In this case we'll log in and what we're concerned with this time is adding other users, assigning them to groups, maybe making other groups, and ultimately assigning these people to the various roles that we have inside of Autodesk PLM 360. So once we're logged into our site, we're going to come up to administration. So a, a, a word of notice, if you can see the word administration up on the top, you are logged in and you are one of the administrators in the system. If you cannot see it, uh, that means you do not have administrative rights. This is going to be useful later on when it comes time to log in and test out workflows as various people in different departments. So let's go up to administration and we're going to come to the area where it says users, groups, and roles. The users, groups, and roles area is where we're going to define the people in the system, group them together into logical arrangements, and then assign them to various roles that we have that define access to the workspaces. In other words, this is where we define our security model. So first, let's take a walk through. There are two users in the system. We have sysadmin and I have one that I've created for myself in this tenant for demonstration purposes. Both of these people have administrative login. Now when it comes to groups, we here at Autodesk have predefined some sample groups for you to use inside of PLM 360. We can come in and rename these, we can delete these, we can make them uh, inactive. But these are a good starting point, a good kind of a guess or a, a shot down the middle of what many customers would want to see. So we have everything from the admin group of which I'm part of and sysadmin. We have groups that allow access to outside people such as customers and even down here we have suppliers. And then down, this, down the rest of the list we have engineering, executive, legal, manufacturing and so on. And you can read the rest of these loosely follow personas or departments and this makes it nice in arranging the security model and the permissions for access within PLM 360 and I'm talking about these categories and the workspaces that come off of each one of these categories. So first let's create a new user. Let's take that workflow and examine the process of creating another user in the system. So we'll come up and click on new user. Now in the new user window, a couple of things that we'll fill out. First of all, we'll create a username for this person and then we'll specify a password and then confirm the password. So let's go and create our new user. We'll pick an easy one. We'll go with engineering and then we'll assign them a password. Be sure to note the password. Uh, optionally, you could make this password something like change me and put a checkbox here and that says that users are required to change the password on next login which means they'll have a their temporary login like pass or password of change me but then they'll go and add their own and they'll be ready to go and use PLM 360. Next you need to fill out first name, last name, some of the other information but the critical information is to fill out first, last, email, and organization. So we'll go and fill out these fields for our engineering user. So I'll make a, a user for this particular tenant and for demonstration purposes I'll say that well this is Ed Engineer, put it in an email, an organization, and optionally you can fill out the rest of the address all the way down to postal. Uh, filling out the time zone would be good too. Set the preference of the unit of measurement and down here on the bottom we have create user. So we can do that. We can create user and we'll just have a new user. But oftentimes inside of PLM we'll have this next step. This is a little bit of a uh, time saver so this will create and optionally add them to groups. We'll select this one. For all new users that you intend on directly adding to groups, please select this. So now we're inside of the, the groups area and what we're seeing is on the left all of the potential groups inside of PLM 360 and on the right all the groups that Ed is assigned to. So we'll choose engineering and add that over to the right and click on save. So we have our new user. We have the username, the login name is simply engineering in my case. 
uh, first name, last, and he's part of the engineering group. So now you can proceed and create other users within the system and then assign them to the different groups. And if you notice in some of the other demonstrations I have one person for operations, uh, one for procurement, sales and marketing, uh, serve, etc. For example, in one of my sites here, I have uh, all of my users. I've got Ed Engineer, Mike Manufacturing, Poly Procurement, and so on. And each one of these people is assigned to a particular group. And when I go to log in, I log in using this name over here in the username column. The name inside of the system and the name as the current owner of a record or uh, additional owners is going to be listed here. So back to groups. You'll note that we had a number of groups that we pre-built inside of all of the tenants. If you would like to edit some of these groups, for instance suppliers, one option might be to make uh, multiple suppliers. In fact we could call this group uh, supplier 1 and come in and perhaps make uh, another group for supplier 2 and that way we can choose what they can see and have them both uh, log in, bid on the same uh, request for quote or RFQ and perhaps not be able to see one another inside of the system. Next we'll discuss the third option that we have up here. We talked about users and we added one. We saw groups and how we can modify a group. Let's discuss roles. Roles are the means of, of which people have access to features inside of the system, specifically workspaces. You'll note that the role name in this case would start right at the top with accident reports adheres to the workspace for accident reports. In other words, when I say workspace, I mean these workspaces that we have up here. So under operations, accident reports, the access to this workspace and the records within and the tabs largely depends on how the role is defined. Taking a look at the first example on accident reports we see that we have an RW so read write. Down underneath it we have just read. So this would imply that we have read and write access so we can edit, we can view, we can uh, do everything that we need to with this particular role. However with this accident report it's just a read only. It's something that somebody can go in and look, they can see, but they can't make any contributions or edit that role or edit that workspace. So let's take a closer look and we'll we'll choose this one because it's right up here at the top. So first of all, this role, if we want, we can select to modify and we can edit. Uh, optionally delete the role if we want. Be very careful with that. We can take a look at the groups that are part of this role. This will give you an idea of just how many groups are participating. So we can see the admin group, of course, has privileges to it, and the operations group has privileges to see it. But what does that mean? Over here under permissions, permissions define exactly what we can do within that particular workspace. You'll note that some of the names like attachments, workflow, workspace, these pertain to the tabs that we see inside of the workspace. More on that on a uh, separate tutorial. But specifically this this uh, role says that we can add, delete, and edit attachments. We can view attachments and view the attachment history. This is the read-write role. Well, let's contrast that with the read-only role and see how that's different. Taking a look at the permissions we see that under the Attachments tab we do not have Add or Delete or Edit. We simply have View History and View Attachment. And Again, this is our security model where we can define at a granular level who can see what and perform what, see which particular tabs we have, and interact with the items in the workspace. Next, let's talk about some best practices when it comes to these roles. You'll see that the roles and the groups were defined by uh, Autodesk, uh, and these are a, a kind of a, a good starting point. Of course, you can take any one of these roles and move it over onto the right. So, best practice tip number one 
do not simply add all of these rolls over to the right. You'll get more than you have bargained for. In fact, you'll have more tabs, more functionality that is, than is logical within the system. So picking and choosing and, and knowing which tabs to use, that's part of our workspace creation and setup tutorial. But one final thing down here, if we come down and you'll see things like a workflow permission and you add it over onto the right, take note that anybody that's part of that group will now have that workflow permission. They'll be notified by email. You are, you're giving them permissions. You're giving them more rights. Another best practice when it comes over here to the users, beware of adding a user to more than one group or multiple groups that might have uh, conflicting interests. Right now, Ed Engineer is part of the engineering group. If we said that Ed Engineer is also part of the admin group, he would log in. He'd be able to see not only administration, but potentially get into the, uh, the back administration side and go into user groups and roles, go into the setup area where we have our workspaces, um, go into the global configuration options. So beware of having people more a part of more than one group. And finally, it's a good idea to have people log into their site as the new user. So in this case, we'll log in as Ed Engineer. Once they log in, have them go through, read the Autodesk Cloud Terms of Service, Privacy Policy, and it's a good idea to start taking the uh, the PLM 360 tour, PLM 360 in six steps, start the tour, watch some of the videos, overview of workspaces, and have them get acquainted with the product.